Oh, hello everyone. So this is going to be a quick demo of me deploying a game, a Unity game to the Xbox One. So I already have everything imported. Uh, so what you'll need to do is there's a post on the Microsoft Developers Forums, Configure Xbox Live in Unity, and this will give you a link to this GitHub site. You click on that, and that will take you to this GitHub repository. So you want to download this Xbox Live Unity package. So with your game open in the Unity editor, you want to double-click that Unity project, Unity package, and that will create a new Xbox Live uh, folder. You'll have this Xbox Live uh, in your project. So what you want to do is you want to go into prefabs and there'll be a user profile prefab and an Xbox Live services prefab. You can see where it says Xbox Live services down here. You want to drag those two over here into your hierarchy and that should get you set up pretty good one thing uh i've got to mention as of september 7th 2017 there's a bug in the latest version of unity that like popped up uh, over the past week which does not allow you to build so what you need to do is you need to have unity 2017 point one point zero p5 installed you also want to install uh, the latest version of Visual Studio, which I believe is 15.3.3, and update the UWP uh, NuGet packages there, which I can show a little bit later. Um, so yeah, to get the new version of Unity, what you'll need to do, I posted a link to it here on this Xbox One user group, but you click here, and then it'll take you to the patch releases. It doesn't. It's under like the special place, not with the standard Unity uh, installer. Because that's the first problem that I had. I tried to run update. I was like, where in the world is this P5 update? It's under this patch releases page. So you can get it right here. And you can download for Windows or Mac. So yeah, as of right now, you want to make sure you have that. Uh, I guess in the near future, that will get rolled into the main unity uh, build the main unity release so you want to go to build settings we'll be doing a universal windows platform uh, do any device i use dc d3d otherwise i get that weird overlay with the cursor and the border if you use uh the zacmal so i do d3d you want to make sure you got unity c sharp projects checked i remember i tried doing didn't do that one time that seemed to lead to problems i just used the latest installed sdk and i just leave that set as local machine so if you click on player settings you want to make sure you work with the settings with the little windows icon that means you're working with the uwp if you you clicked on the download that's pc mac and linux but you want the little windows icon over here um i got a splash image set uh, you can change the background for your splash image, which is kind of nice. Uh, so it isn't just like the standard black Unity background. Um, and here's where you set the windows. But there's a trick to this. I think you need to set the 100 and the 200. I think the 200 is especially important for Xbox One because I think it uses that 200 by default. Otherwise, you're going to get a big white box when your xbox game starts which isn't very pretty um you can also set overwrite the background color which is kind of nice that's the background color that's going to display for the unity well if you set the image for the unity background it'll display that but just for your little splash image when it's initially loading it's kind of nice to be able to change the color of that um icons this is a kind of confusing part. You got Windows titles and icon tiles and icons. Windows. I don't deal with the Windows Phone. 
I deal with the Windows tiles and the Universal 10 tiles. And there's going to be all these different options. And I'm not exactly sure which ones are required and which ones aren't. I think the square 10, 310 by 310 is very important. I think that's the one that it's going to use for the box art on the Microsoft Store. Unless you go into the Windows Developer uh, website and change the default. But... Also, it's important to set these windows tiles, and there's all these different aspect ratios, which I actually have a script that's on my GitHub, which will generate these for you, which I may make another video just on that. But I'll try to set all the 100% uh, 100 for all those images. So anyway, what you want to do is you want to click on build if you have all that. Well, first of all, we're going to press play and just try out the game with the Xbox stuff enabled. I'm getting this GUID error, which I don't know if that's really... I'm getting that GUID error, which is just some weirdness. I think that can be safely ignored. But uh, when you start your game, let's go to maximize... You're going to get this fake user, so that's expected with the fake gamer score right there, so that's good. Uh, to actually see the user, so by the way, once you um, install the Xbox Live package, you'll have a Xbox Live menu option up here. Get out of that. So you'll want to run the configuration. You'll run the association wizard right here then that will put all this neat information right here you need to make sure your sandbox here matches the sandbox id down here and you want to make sure that you're in developer mode so you click on that if that's not enabled so what you want to do file build settings and just click on build so this is going to and i already got an empty folder set up called slowbot uwp in my build folder so I'm just going to select that one select folder and then it's going to take a little while to compile so while that's compiling it's kind of hard to see I don't have a t capture for my TV but that's my TV running the game and uh, dev mode dev mode activation for Xbox one there's an IP address in the upper left hand corner um, that's got a say like 192.168.168. something if it's got a different ip address it means that you don't have your xbox uh with a wired connection you got to have a wired like ethernet connection that's on your home network otherwise it will refuse to deploy your game so after that finishes compiling it's going to open up a window it's going to show your slow bot or my game's called slow bot um so it's going to show the deployed. I'm going to go ahead and close Unity. I'm going to just double click on the slow bot. Make sure you got Visual Studio 2017. Uh, make sure you wipe off all other versions of Visual Studio. That's what I recommend. It gets ugly when you have 2017 and 2015 both installed. And I recommend getting the, the Visual Studio from the Microsoft site and not the Visual Studio that comes with Unity. I've had issues with that. But yeah, if you look at about Microsoft Visual Studio, you want 15.3.3. .3 and like I said before, as of September 2nd, 2017. That version will most definitely change in the future. Um, you want to click on your project, Universal Windows. Go to Manage NuGet Packages. And da, 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 Windows. Okay, so this is a problem. Uh, so you definitely want to upgrade. I think you got to do this per project too. It's not like you can just do this once. Once I think you got to upgrade this every single time, which is kind of annoying. Okay, Universal Windows update. And you don't want ARM up here. Okay, yeah, we want to install that. I accept. We always want to be working in X64. So it looks like it finished installing that package. Let's go ahead and test this on a local machine in debug mode. So there's my title screen. 
or not title, but uh, splash screen. So here's my background with the Unity logo on top. So you can't get rid of the Unity logo. You can't get rid of the Unity logo unless you um, get the professional edition. Kill that music. So you can see here, it actually is using, since I'm in developer mode on my system, it's displaying my logged in gamer tag and gamer score. Um, it isn't changing the picture for some reason. I don't know why. That's something I need to look into, but supposedly that was supposed to just like work out of the box using that package that I downloaded from GitHub, but that doesn't work. I mean, I'm not that concerned okay so i'm not that concerned about the gamer picture but if you do not log the user in to xbox live you'll fail certification uh, i think it's an automated script that's run by microsoft after you submit your game it could actually be people playing your game i don't know but if you don't log the user into xbox live you'll fail certification and then your game won't be published so it's good to log people in. So let's try to actually deploy this. I've had issues getting this to run on the Xbox One. It will run, but it won't log the player in. So let's change this to remote machine. So I'm gonna use that IP that's on my Xbox One, which you probably can't see, but it's in the upper right hand corner over there, which this isn't super sensitive or anything. Just a local area IP 192.168.115. I'm going to make sure this is set to universal. Press select. So now this changes to remote machine up here. So we're going to deploy on remote machine, which is the Xbox One. Uh, my retail Xbox One in dev mode. So it's deploying now. So this is my game deploying on the Xbox One. You can see the title screen. And there's the Unity splash screen. It's kind of blurry. So it's going to start my game. You can see it's got the the login in the upper right hand and then my copyright info in the lower left hand. So if we come back over here and look at Visual Studio, we're going to see a system magret exception, one or more errors, unhandled Xbox veto error. You can look at view details. If you look at details, it's going to say dollar exception count equals cs103 the name enter exception count does not exist in current context and it's a system aggregate exception can I expand that oh here's a lot more information right here so i think it's got something to do with me not handling or checking the sign in return value I don't know. It's, it's a lot to look at. Um, if you go back, I was on one of the... Here's the interface. If you connect directly to... If you connect to your Xbox One through the web interface, you can like, see a lot of neat information, like uh, the performance monitor. It's actually kind of cool. You can view the network and the CPU of your Xbox. That's actually kind of cool. So here's some information about compiler error, CS0103. Uh, da, 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 da. It just says do a try-catch around it, but I don't know what to do a try-catch around. Uh, that's something I was working on. So actually I wrote some code to check to see that the Xbox user is not null before proceeding with 
letting the user press start on the game, which I think that could be the reason why my kitty's adventure failed certification earlier. It just randomly failed certification like Monday at 4 a.m., which uh, it's kind of weird because it's already published, so I don't know what's going on there. That's the GUID error. So here's information about signing the user in. Sign into Xbox Live in Unity. So here's use. So I think some of this has changed because there's no Xbox Live CS in my project. I'm thinking that. Let me start. Let me kill. Oh, and by the way, I can like make my game continue, but I, I kind of want to fix that error. I can make it continue on the Xbox One by. Like skipping over that exception, which I don't know. If I skip over the exception, then the user never does get logged in. But with my first game, it did something similar, I'm pretty sure. And when I actually published, so at that point it would compile and make an Apex upload package, which I upload to the Dev Center, and then it was published. It passed the initial certification, so it's kind of strange. But anyway, I think Xbox Live Services is now what they're referring to as Xbox Live CS, because in Xbox Live Scripts, there's no Xbox Live CS. So I'm guessing that changed and they just haven't updated their... Because if you look at... X, I think if you look at Xbox Live Services... Or Xbox... Wait. Yeah, Xbox Live Services Settings. Then this has Don't Destroy on Load. Right there. And that is what they're referring to right here. Don't destroy on load. So I think they changed Xbox Live CS to Xbox Live Services Manager. Or Services Settings. So I don't know. I don't know why this might be the same error that I'm having. Just two days ago. So yeah, this is all kind of like bleeding edge stuff. They just... Open the creators program like a couple of weeks ago. So, uh, yeah, I'm not screaming at Microsoft or anything. I know they're, they're actively working on this. And they seem to be actually doing a pretty good job of fixing problems and things like that. So, anyway, uh, that's me deploying a game to the Xbox One. Still having issues with... Uh, the sign-in, at least on my dev uh, console, but uh, I can get a game running on Xbox One again, and I can get uh, the services working, deploying to uh, the Windows 10 interface. So anyway, thanks for watching.